Today I am doing an uncut video of me playing my ocarinas because I remember when I first started playing ocarinas or trying to get into ocarinas at all I had like a lot of questions that I hope to answer in this uncut video so I wanted to show you exactly like how many mistakes I have because it's completely normal to have a butt ton of mistakes even a year and a half into playing. I mean, I, I play almost every single day with these ocarinas and I still make so many mistakes. <laughs> so I thought it would be interesting and I thought I might be able to answer some questions that I used to have for maybe those people who were trying to get into ocarinas and get into playing. So I'm going to get straight into it and start off with my strawberry ocarina, which I got from Freckled Zelda. Um, she's another YouTuber who does, like, ocarina stuff. This is, like, her specialty ocarina. And so, um, usually what I do first is I usually practice some scales just to, like, get everything down. So that, like, if I, if I wanted to ever play a song that didn't have, like, notes on the internet or something or someone who had already played it, I can just figure it out on my own, right? So that's... So I practiced that a couple times, like And then I'll usually get into either Misty Mountains or The Song of Time, which are two songs that I play a lot on this one. I specifically haven't played that one in a, lot, in a little while. So that was Misty Mountains and only like the first part of it because um, I don't actually like in my head know the second part of it. So I found that hard to learn and I kind of just gave up <laughs> because I just find the first part fun. And then um, Song of Time, I know on this ocarina and this ocarina. So you'll hear that two times day, of course, obviously, like... Uh, who doesn't love the Song of Time? <laughs> if I miss some of the notes, gotta like rewire those into the brain. Because the brain makes like different pathways and stuff, and you gotta work on that to uh, be able to play these a lot of these songs. So this, that's most of the songs I know on this one. That's usually what I do for my daily practice, if I'm doing a daily practice. Um, this one I'll pick up occasionally, but it's slightly off tune. Um, let me show you. It's still playable, but I don't play it as much because the note, there's one or two notes that are just a little off. And you know, you, you can tell, especially when I played my other one right before it. So then I usually go on to my bigger ocarina and then I do some scales there, which the scales on here are a lot easier since they're not like the cross section thing that the smaller ocarinas sometimes have. So that's my entire range of note. Not all, not the entire range. Excuse me. Hmm. Sounding a little weird. I don't I don't know why. But um start from here and go all the way up to here without any fingers. Which you know for me when I'm playing these really high notes I hold my fingers on the back like this, or just off of the holes, just lifting them up, and then I put my fingers here. And usually I hold it right here. So to get those higher notes and not drop the ocarina, you know. <laughs> yeah, see? So that's, that's something that I wish I had learned a little earlier. And something else I'd like to mention is um, this ocarina has very big holes on the back 
This specific ocarina is from stl.com and I ordered it, ordered it online. So um, this one, my entire thumb fits into because I have really small fingers. So if you're buying ocarinas, you're, you should probably try to look at some of like the whole sizings. I know that there are like some stores that, some music stores that sell ocarinas. So I would rather go in real life to buy an ocarina than buy one online because you just don't know if your thumb is going to fit. And that's, that's the truth. I've heard a lot of other people having that kind of issue before. And um, what I do next is I usually go into one of my songs after I'm done playing my scale, my scales, or sometimes I just jump right into the song because I feel like songs. <laughs> so I usually go in a pattern playing almost all the songs that I know. Like right now I'm not playing like Carol of the Bells or the other, other like Christmas songs or whatever. I'm also not playing the Pirates of the Caribbean song right now. So, but I have like my normal like go-to songs that usually take a good while so i'll play like one or two maybe I, I don't know should i play the whole i mean i might as well if if anyone's wi like willing to watch through all of that i don't want to be boring you know so here we go first i start off with uh mifa's theme from breath of the wild to or um legend of zelda breath of the wild there we go with that song I was thinking about something because you know I, I I know these songs so well that I can think about other things and play perfectly at the same time you know so I was thinking um about there's a lot of good online resources for um learning some of these ocarina songs but the main issue is they would be for a four hole or a six hole or something it's a little bit harder to find for 12-hole ocarinas, which is this one, which is a little unfortunate, but also, you know, it's, it, you can also figure out a lot of songs, you know? You can also, um, look up just regular music charts. If, if you know how to play, like, piano or, some, or something, every song that has ever been created is on the piano. Like, you can, you can find those resources online. So, I have a little bit of piano knowledge from when I was younger, and so, it, learning how to be able to translate that to uh, learn to play with ocarina is, I think, at least a little bit important. Maybe not if you're not trying to be super professional. Like, I'm not trying to be, like, super, super professional. But, like, I I, I think it would still be important, you know? Like, either way. It's, it's nice to read music. <laughs> my mom did good on that. And so, I'm going to go right into my next song which would be uh, Lost Woods, uh, definitely a fan favorite. <laughs> I always get asked to play um, Lo the Lost Woods or Saria's song whenever I'm at like a convention or something, which I love because I love this song. But it's not a good beginner song. I will say that much. Like, I played it when I was a beginner. That was not the best idea since I didn't know like good like breath techniques or anything. So it was really bad, but I'm a lot better now. So I, I would recommend, if you want to, I would recommend Song of Time or Zelda's Lullaby as like both really good beginner songs, you know, like 
they're slow and simple and also a lot of fun <laughs> so let's get right into my next song see i i kind of already got that off a little bit so i'm gonna replay it because it sounded a little weird end part there the takes a lot of practice is when you're like first learning how to play it because there's like an, a note skip at the very beginning which is a little difficult and then you're going like up and down and also you have to learn like the breath thing which is like do 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 you know you gotta have a quick tongue <laughs> um yeah, then I usually play Zelda's Lullaby after that one, and then Song of Time, you know? Just some, like, simple, quick, easy ones. That was the wrong song. <laughs> Um, those were Zelda's Lullaby and then Song of Time, which, you know, they're slow. They're slow and easy. Good for beginners. Um, and, uh, something else I wanted to mention. Let's see. It was just on, like, the tip of my tongue. Um, no, I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> An unedited video. I, also, I don't really know how to edit yet, so this is, this is a good video for me. Maybe I'll learn some editing skills eventually but um next i usually play um song of storms which is another amazing fan favorite i love song of storms so much i don't really care that if a lot of people request song of storms because i absolutely love it <laughs> but i know a lot of other ocarina players they they try to take this instrument a little bit more seriously which you know i, I still take it seriously but i mainly got into it because i loved legend of zelda you know and i wanted to learn another instrument so this was actually such an easy pickup the only thing that i got annoyed with was the money <laughs> ocarinas are pretty spendy but i mean if you use it as much as i do <laughs> it's so worth it like, seriously. So, um, I would not recommend Song of Storms for beginners. <laughs> because it's a very fast song. Oh, um, that thing that was on the tip of my tongue earlier. Um, something that I struggled with when I first started playing Ocarina was I started playing songs too fast too early. So, for one, the song was too fast and it didn't sound right. For two, I started playing it super early early really fast which is not a good idea because then you're not actually like teaching your brain the correct notes to play you're just kind of like la, 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 you know so if you get a wrong note and then continue going you're teaching your brain that wrong note what you need to do is you need to learn the song slowly so that then you can continue to like remember those perfect notes you know i'll always replay the notes that you didn't get i i don't always i really should <laughs> but that's just because like my little adhd brain just like woo, you know <laughs> 
So remember to, when you're learning a song, just play it slowly. And don't play songs too fast, because I'm still struggling with that thing where I just started playing those songs too fast. And now I still play those songs too fast. Even though I get the notes right, for the most part, I still play them too fast. <laughs> and so I've been trying to fix that a lot lately. And so here we go into Song of Storms. I usually like to play that one two times through just because like because it's fun. It's, it's fun when you know a song and you can play it fast. Like, um, playing it really fast in front of people or the camera just because like I can play fast <laughs> so um usually after Song of Storms let's see what do I do I, I usually just play them all in succession you know not like talking in between so I think I go on to yeah I think it's Gerudo Valley next which is playing this song I found it very I haven't even played all the way through it but um I found it very difficult to um like do those really really quick notes kind of like similar to Song of Storms where I just went but you know it doesn't sound as good so that's where the playing it slow comes in, because I went straight into trying to play it fast, which is not the best idea in the world. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to finish Gerudo Valley. something else I might want to mention is um what I also do is I kind of get stressed about holding the ocarina you know like being being getting those quick notes I start to kind of stress my fingers which um on an ocarina you really don't need to hold it so hard like you just need to cover up the notes yeah you you really can't tell a difference if you like clench it or not which I have a habit of like kind of clenching my ocarina which actually starts to um I had an injury at one point with this part of my hand because a lot of the ocarina weight rests on right here so I actually had a pretty bad injury at one time during like when I was doing a lot of my YouTube channel stuff and I was playing a lot of ocarina on my YouTube channel um, I actually got a pretty decent injury. I didn't go into the clinic or anything for that, but, like, I I couldn't play for a while. You'll also find that, um, that same kind of, like, close to an injury when you're, like, first playing. Because there is a lot of weight, especially for people who are not left-handed. Like, this is, this is a right-handed ocarina, right? I, I think there's left-handed ocarinas out there. I don't know. I'd have to fact-check that. But, like, this is how right people... <laughs> right-handed people play the ocarina and since I'm right-handed my I'm not used to putting a lot of pressure on my left hand so that was something I had to like I had to like strengthen my hand to be able to play the ocarina a lot better you know <laughs> I just got a low power mode notification um eh, it's, it's fine it's 20 percent it'll last <laughs> um and then the next song I usually go to is um, the main theme of The Legend of Zelda. Now, so many ocarina players have trouble with this song because of the beginning of it, which I actually, 
I'm very proud of myself for this. I actually took the time to play it slowly in the beginning part because it's like do 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 do. That's a lot of quick notes in a quick succession. <laughs> so a lot of ocarina players find it a little bit harder to play that part. And so, you know, go slow. I would not recommend this song for beginners either. <laughs> It's kind of quick um of course that's that's how i prefer it but um that that one took about a year to learn the entire thing of it and be able to play it correctly that this one took a really long time for me especially since i've only been playing for a year and a half so <laughs> that's that's a lot of time just practicing this one song you know like i i don't have any um other kind of flute experience behind this so this is me literally learning from scratch like absolute scratch like i had i i was dinking around on bass guitar and i learned some piano a little bit like when i was younger other than that i had like no experience whatsoever i just really wanted to play zelda songs on a zelda instrument <laughs> Um, next I play the Great Fairy Fountain, which I learned actually a lot re a lot more recently. Um, this is one of my newer songs, so I'll get right into that. As you can hear, there was a lot of sharps and flats in that song which um i learned it by ear <laughs> i didn't look up any kind of music sheets or anything most most ocarina players will tell you that they learn a lot of things by ear this one i learned by ear and it was a pain like an actual pain <laughs> because there's so many sharps and flats which you use with this note So I, I had to like learn all of those sharps and flats, which was such a pain. <laughs> um, it's definitely like a little bit more of a showy song since I've not seen a lot of it played on the ocarina before. So it's like a me song, you know? Um, let's see. Then uh, I would say I usually go on to playing Lon Long Ranch or Epona's song or whatever um but i i play that one off and on because i find it a little bit boring <laughs> unfortunately i'm sorry <laughs> but uh yeah i i play this one on and off so it, it's not perfect it's not as good as the other ones for being slow but this is also a good be beginner song if you like opponent's theme so it's a little bit of my own flair to that one to make it a little bit more entertaining for me <laughs> um after that i think usually that one's more of my like usually closer to my last song um but lately i've been learning how to play um the day from my hero academia the first opening theme and that that one <laughs> i don't think i white have it right um that one i also learned by ear because i i saw freckled zelda play it like in one of her shorts just once <laughs> so 
I know there's at least one other ocarina player out there that knows how to play it, but there's no resources for it whatsoever for playing on the ocarina. So I did it completely by ear, all by myself. Which, <laughs> that was a doozy. That, that took a while. And I'm still learning it. That's why I haven't, like, put out a full good short on me playing the song. Also because it's a little longer and I don't know if it would fit into one minute. You know? So... I started with the wrong notes. That's why that was weird. There's a little intersection there where usually a guitar comes in and the singer isn't singing. So I, it, it's a little bit of a weird skip, I will admit. And I'll also admit that I suck at this song currently. <laughs> so I'm going to replay it um, just because, you know, that's, that's how I practice. If I get enough notes wrong, I'm going to go back and replay it, you know. And then here's the You know, when you're um, copying the lead singer of a song straight over to the ocarina, sometimes things don't exactly translate the same because a person's voice is very different from a wind instrument. Though they're still like wind based, if you think about it, because like vocal cords and blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's kind of interesting, actually. I might, <laughs> I might want to research that. But that's usually the end of my ocarina session, which, you know, it doesn't take almost 30 minutes on average. I mean, if I'm learning a new song, it may take like close to an hour. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's like my two cents on Ocarina stuffage. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed the video and actually made it to the end, please drop a comment because I've never done a video ever close to anything this long. <laughs> Which I'm I'm interested if people will actually click on it or not, you know? See if it'll get me any actual views. And I might actually put a little bit more time into, like, these longer form videos. Maybe I'll do some art, because, like, I love art! <laughs> so, um, you all have a great day. Um, yeah. And, uh, have fun playing the ocarina. That's what this instrument should be used for. You should be having a lot of fun with it, in my opinion. I mean, it's a little bit... More of an odd one. There's a lot of odd ocarinas out there. Like, it, you know, it's, it's a cool instrument that I think should be had fun with. So you definitely have fun with your ocarinas. I will see you guys again probably tomorrow or the next day with another short. We'll see. Um, I don't have quite a schedule yet, but we'll get into that. Um, you guys have a great day.